In the previous video, we looked at aldol condensations with the same molecule. You could call those a simple aldol condensation. In this video, we're going to look at mixed or crossed aldol condensation. So no longer are you starting with the same molecule. Here, we don't have two aldehydes that are the same. We have different aldehydes, right? We have benzaldehyde on the left and propanal on the right. And so we need to figure out what sort of enolate anion that we're going to form. So when we add our sodium hydroxide as our base, what is going to be our enolate anion? Uh, to do that, we need to look for alpha carbons, right? So we'll start with propanal. We know the alpha carbon is the one next to the carbonyl. And so right here, this would be an alpha carbon. And there are two protons on that alpha carbon. So we have two alpha protons here. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw in those. And um, so that's a possibility to form our enolate anion. This aldehyde hydrogen right here is not. We're not gonna form an enolate from that, so we don't have to worry about the right side of our aldehyde. Let's look at benzaldehyde now. So if we think about this carbon right here, it is the carbon next to a carbonyl. However, this carbon already has four bonds to it, and so it doesn't have an alpha proton. So benzaldehyde does not have an alpha proton, so we don't need to worry about it forming an enolate anion. And so we know the enolate anion is going to form from propanol over here. And so let me just go ahead and redraw these in a way that makes it easier for me to see what the product is. So I'm just gonna draw my ring here. I'm gonna draw my, my carbonyl. And I, I like to leave off this hydrogen because it just gets in the way when I'm thinking about my mechanism. And for my propanol over here, I prefer to draw a different conformation of propanol to make it easier to see the product. So I like to, I like to put my carbonyl up here like this. And then I like to draw this carbon down like that. And it's gonna make it easier uh, to come up with the final result. All right, so if I think about deprotonation, right, if I think about sodium hydroxide taking one of these alpha protons here, right, leaving electrons behind in my alpha carbon, I can think about the structure of the carb anion enolate anion, right? So there's a negative one formal charge on this carbon, and that's my nucleophilic enolate anion. Once again, I prefer to draw the carb anion as opposed to the oxy anion. It just makes it easier for me when I'm trying to do a quick mechanism like on a test to figure out a product here. So now we have a, a nucleophile, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and put these electrons in magenta. So this is going to be our nucleophile. And our nucleophile is going to attack the electrophilic portion of our benzaldehyde molecule, right? So if we think about that, the oxygen is partial negative and this carbonyl carbon here is partially positive. So that's the electrophilic portion of the molecule. And so that lone pair of electrons here on this carbon is going to attack this carbon, right? Pushing these electrons off onto the oxygen. And that would form an, an alk oxide intermediate. So let me just go ahead and sketch in here. All right, so we would, form, uh, we would form an oxygen right there with three lone pairs of electrons giving it a negative one formal charge. And I'll come back to that. The important carbon-carbon bond that's formed is right here. And then we have, we can go ahead and draw in everything else. So we have our aldehyde and then don't forget about this down here. So in magenta, right, these electrons in magenta right, it formed our new bond right here. And then we would have an alk oxide um, intermediate, and we can think about just protonating it. So I'm not concerned with an exact mechanism here. I'm more concerned about figuring out the product. All right, so we go ahead and uh, protonate our alk oxide to form our aldol intermediate. And so in the next step, right, if you add heat, you're, uh, you're most likely going to form your conjugated product. So let's, uh, let's think about what would happen next, right? So we still have an alpha carbon. So this carbon right here next to our carbonyl is an alpha carbon. It still has an alpha proton on it, right? So we could show a proton right here. And we could think about hydroxide, once again, acting as a base. So hydroxide acting as a base, coming along and taking this proton. Right? And then uh, we could even just go ahead and think about the final product. We could think about these electrons moving into here and then these electrons moving out onto here. Again, I'm not so concerned with the exact detailed mechanism. I'm more worried about figuring out how to figure out our product here. So when I draw our product, right, we have our ring and then we now have a double bond that forms here. Right? We have this going down and then we have our aldehyde. So we form a conjugated product. We have an enal as our product here. So let's, uh, let's follow those electrons, right? So let's, uh, let's make these electrons in blue here, right? So these electrons in blue moved in here to form our double bond. And we are, are already formed this bond in magenta, right? The carbon-carbon bond forming part to form our aldol. And then we lost hydroxide. And so this would be our final product, our, our conjugated product. So again, the goal 
is just to uh, to figure out how to draw a product right from these reactants and thinking about where is the alpha carbon and thinking about what is the enolate that forms. All right, let's let's do another one where uh, I just kind of walk you through my thought process here. So let's uh, let's look at this reaction. So say you had this on an exam, and uh, your task was to draw the product. All right, so we have uh, once again some different possible alpha carbons. So let's fo first focus on uh, cyclohexanone. All right, so we know that this could be an alpha carbon, and we know that this could be an alpha carbon. All right, and then for this compound over here, we have this, the, these two carbonyls, right, and this molecule. So we know that this could be an alpha carbon, and we know that this could be an alpha carbon. And so now we have to figure out which one of those alpha carbons is going to be deprotonated when we add sodium methoxide, right, as our base right here. And if you remember in one of the earlier videos, we talked about an alpha carbon between two carbonyls as having the most acidic proton. So this alpha carbon right here has two protons on it, and it's easy to deprotonate. All right, because of the uh, the resonance stabilization that we can draw because of those carbonyls, and so these protons are are the most acidic, right? Much more acidic than uh, than the protons on our ketone here, and so these are the ones that are going to be uh, one of these protons could be deprotonated when we add sodium methoxide here. So sodium methoxide is going to come along, right? Take one of these protons here, leave these electrons behind, and so let's go ahead and uh, and redraw what we would form here. So we're going to form our enolate anion. So let me go ahead and draw that. So we would now have a lone pair of electrons on our carbon, giving that carbon a negative one formal charge. So let me follow those electrons. These electrons in magenta are now on our carbon, forming our carb anion. And I'm not going to take the time to draw the, the resonance structures for the oxy anions because I'm just concerned about figuring out the product here. So now we have a nucleophilic enolate anion, and we know that's going to attack the carbonyl of our ketone, right? So going back over here to our ketone, right? The oxygen is partial negative, this carbon is partially positive, and so our nucleophile is going to attack our electrophile. So you can think about these electrons, right? Attacking here, pushing those electrons off onto your oxygen. So if we were to draw the intermediate here, right? We would have our ring. And we're going, to, uh, we're going to form an alk oxide, so I'm not going to draw all the lone pairs on that oxygen right now. I'm more concerned right now with showing the formation of this bond. So let me go ahead and draw in everything, and then we'll follow some electrons. So I put in my carbonyls, and then I have these guys over here like that. So the electrons in magenta, right, these electrons formed our carbon-carbon bond. So they formed this bond right here. And then we would form an alk oxide. And then we would just go ahead and, and protonate that to form our aldol. So once again, just to save time, not an exact mechanism, but thinking about our intermediate as being this aldol. All right, so because we have heat, we're, we're probably going to uh, once again form a conjugated product here and keep going for the complete aldol condensation. And so next we can think about, uh, we can think about this alpha carbon right here, right? Uh, still having an acidic proton on it, right? So there's still a proton attached to that alpha carbon. And so sodium methoxide could come along. So we have an ethoxide anion. Let's go ahead and draw that in here, which could function as our base, right? So it could take that proton, right? And think about these electrons moving into here to form our double bond. We could think about hydroxide as a leaving group. And then that just allows us to figure out our product. So we have our ring, and then we now have a double bond, and then we have a carbonyl over here, and then a carbonyl over here, and then our oxygen and our ethyl like that. So let's, uh, let's think about those electrons. So the electrons in blue here move in to form our double bond, and we had already formed a carbon-carbon bond before, so let's say it's these electrons right here. And then we have a, a stable conjugated product. And so, uh, once again, I, I'm just thinking about how to draw the product uh, for a reaction on an exam. And hopefully, hopefully this helps.